<laughs> the Godfather is a classic 1972 family gangster film following Don Vito Corleone, the aging patriarch of the Corleone crime family, as he looks to transfer control of his empire to one of his three sons. As the second film shows us in flashback segment, Vito's rise to power, eventually becoming the most powerful of the five New York Dons, consisted of befriending and teaming up with two low-level crooks, Peter Clemenza and Salvatore Tessio. The trio worked together as criminals, facing off against the likes of the oppressive Don Fanucci in Little Italy, and when Vito murders Fanucci, he gains the respect of both Clemenza and Tessio. And as Vito rises in the underworld, so too do Clemenza and Tessio as his underlings. Eventually, as the first film shows us, Tessio and Clemenza would remain loyal to their Don, acting as his capo regimes in Vito's crime family, being instrumental in both Vito's rise to power and his maintaining of his status as the most powerful gangster in New York. Clemenza and Tessio both operate their own regimes under Vito, and when Vito goes into semi-retirement and places his son Michael in charge, it's only the friendship of Vito that stops the duo from breaking off the Corleone family and forming their own, as they do not trust Michael's leadership and their territories face constant threats and attacks from the rivals of the Corleone family. The pressure the Corleones face and the untested leadership of Michael even prompts Tessio, one of Vito's oldest, sharpest and most loyal of friends, to jump ship and switch sides in the Corleone's fight against their enemies. His betrayal and death is something I've already covered in another video called The Final Moments of Salvatore Tessio, so feel free to check it out and while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button to stay up to date on future videos. You can also support the channel on Patreon or by becoming a channel member where you can get early access to videos on movies like The Godfather and shows like The Sopranos and even access to exclusive members only videos. Even though Clemenza's loyalty is called into question in The Godfather, like with him being so adamant to start his own family and Tom Hagen telling Michael he always thought it would have been Clemenza, when discussing who would betray the Corleones, Clemenza, as it turns out, actually remained loyal to Michael, and when Michael takes out the heads of the rival New York families and moves his family out to Lake Tahoe, it is Clemenza who remains in New York and essentially takes over what is the Corleone crime family. However, by the time we get to The Godfather Part 2, Clemenza is already dead, and his operations have been taken over by his trusted lieutenant, Frank Pentangeli, also known as Frankie Five Angels. Practically every major Corleone mobster from The Godfather, even the silent assassin Al Neri or the button man Willy Chichi is in the second Godfather movie, but such a pivotal character like Clemenza is bizarrely absent, with him having died in between the events of the first and second movie. Very little is mentioned of Clemenza during Michael's timeline in The Godfather Part 2. Michael mentions that Pentangeli took over his operations after his death, and that's about it. Aside from one small exchange, easy to forget about after you've sat through the entire three and a half hour film between Pentangeli, Willy Chichi, who is now part of Frankie's crew, and Fredo Corleone, Michael's idiot brother. Pentangeli and Fredo greet each other after having not seen each other for a long time, both jubilant and talkative. Pentangeli then introduces Chichi, saying, you remember Willy Chichi who was with the old man Clemenza in Brooklyn? And then all of a sudden, the mood changes. There is a pause, and Fredo is quiet and sombre before saying, We were all upset about that. Heart attack, huh? And Willie chimes in, saying, No, no, that was no heart attack. And an emotional Frankie then says, That's what I'm here to see your brother Mike about. And when he goes to see Mike, he discusses his beef with the Risotto brothers, with it seemingly being that Clemenza promised some territories to the Risotto brothers after he died, but Pentangeli refusing to give the territories to them. That's how Michael puts it, but Pentangeli says that Clemenza promised them nothing and that he hated them, and the Risotto brothers are giving Pentangeli grief, taking hostages and whatnot, and he's unable to do anything about it because Michael won't let him, as the brothers are backed up by the Jewish gangster Hyman Roth and Michael is in the middle of some delicate business with Roth. The point is, there seems to have been issues with the Corleone family, run by Clemenza and Pentangeli, and the Risotto brothers. But that line from Chi Chi, it was no heart attack, you'd think that would open up a whole can of worms, that it would be referenced later, that it would be revealed that Clemenza was murdered by someone we know, but it's literally never brought up again. So what's all this about? 
on how exactly did Clemenza die. First of all, it's important to note that Richard Castellano, the man who played Peter Clemenza, was supposed to reprise his role in The Godfather Part II, but he was dropped from the film after disagreements between him, Paramount Pictures and director Francis Ford Coppola. I go into this in a lot more detail in another video of mine called Why Was Clemenza Not In The Godfather Part II? So be sure to check that video out as it's essentially a companion piece to this one. And I won't go over the same points here for the sake of viewers who have already seen that video. But to summarise, the character of Clemenza was written out of the script and he was pretty much replaced by Frank Pentangeli. So everything you see in The Godfather Part 2 with Frankie Five Angels was originally supposed to happen to Clemenza, only of course the actor was fired from the movie. That's the real reason why Clemenza wasn't in the movie, the real reason as to why the character died. So when you think to yourself, why did they kill off Clemenza? That's why, because the actor was fired from the film. But in terms of the in-movie universe, the only point of reference we have is Fredo mentioning that it was a heart attack and Willie saying it wasn't. And then Frankie saying that he wants to speak to Michael about this and his entire rant is about the Rosato brothers. The implication is clear. Chi Chi believes that Clemenza was taken out, with it being insinuated that it was the Rosato brothers. It's quite bizarre really that such a prominent character from the first film gets such a meagre mention in the second. And if the character is dead because the actor was fired, why not say he died from a heart attack and leave it at that? Why the need for the extra drama by suggesting there was foul play, but never following up on it? It seems like a bit of a random creative choice on part of the filmmakers. Or maybe it was intentionally left there as a talking point, so that 50 years later, a YouTuber who doesn't really get out much would end up making a video on it. So, did he die of a heart attack or was he bumped off? It's left ambiguous for us to discuss, and the book the films are based off, Mario Puzo's The Godfather, is of no help, because none of these events with Pantangeli or the Rosato brothers actually take place, and Clemenza does not die. Of course, it wouldn't be surprising if Clemenza did die of a heart attack, given his poor diet and seeing as though he was so overweight. You wouldn't think twice if someone told you that this was his method of death. And interestingly, this is actually how Castellano himself died of a heart attack. Even if it was a heart attack, and it remained just a heart attack, Pentangeli and Chi Chi might think they're still justified in thinking they are third parties to blame. After all, Clemenza was an old man, and the stress that the fight against the Rosato brothers would have placed upon him could have induced a heart attack. Maybe Pentangeli even thinks Michael shares the blame. He was drunk and accusing of Michael in their meeting, and it's possible that Michael's refusal to back the Corleones against the Rosato brothers put pressure on Clemenza's health, or at the very least caused him grief and anguish, since the old man might feel Michael is turning his back on his old family. Of course, None of these players in the game have the foresight of Michael. Everyone involved sees this as a street beef over power and territory. But Michael's strategy was to work until he could work out what Hyman Roth's strategy was. And if that meant the Corleones had to lose a few territories, then so be it. So Chi Chi and Pentangeli might have accepted that the death of Clemenza was natural in the technical sense of the word, but they still brought the blame to Michael and the Rosato brothers' doorsteps. There's also the more obvious implication of Chi-Chi's line that Clemenza's death was a mob hit. Poison, perhaps? That's one of the more obvious ways, I guess, of killing someone without making it look like an execution. And you could then simply pay off a doctor to say it was a heart attack. Michael is removed from the action in New York, whereas Pentangeli is in the thick of it. So if anyone would be able to work out that it wasn't a natural death, it would be him. And that's his position. If it was a hit carried out by the Rosato brothers, then this would be Hyman Roth's first major move in taking down Michael. As old man Clemenza was Michael's man in New York, and with him out of the way and a turf war being launched between the Rosato brothers and Pentangeli, it would weaken Michael and distract him. Pentangeli would have surely put this theory to Michael, and it seems as though Michael dismisses it. Why? Again, it's either because he doesn't think the theory has any weight, or to keep the peace until he can sort out the Roth situation. It seems sad that Michael wouldn't consider avenging Clemenza as part of a manoeuvre, but Michael isn't exactly known for his sentimentality, and he instead would play the long game and take his enemies out in the distant future all at the same time. 
Now, whether this was actually the case, we'll never know. Sure, Chi Chi and Five Angels think the old man was whacked, but it's in their interest to blame the Rosotto brothers. And even if Clemenza slipped coming down the stairs, Pentangeli would rationalise it in his head that the Rosotto brothers sabotaged Clemenza's staircase with a set of bananas. That's the kind of fiery mode he was in, and the kind of emotional character he was anyway. So Chi Chi and Pentangeli aren't exactly witnesses without a vested interest. So it may be that it was a simple heart attack, but they want to just pin it on their enemies. Their enemies having a strategic reason to want Clemenza dead. It could be simply a case of the duo being dramatic and proposing a theory which suits their narrative. Maybe it was Frankie himself. Stranger things have happened. Maybe Frankie didn't like the way the old man was handling things and wanted the top seat for himself. But as there is literally no suggestion in the film that this could be the case, there's little use in discussing this possibility. Maybe it was one of the other major New York families looking for revenge after the baptism of fire at the end of the first film with a simultaneous attempt to re-establish themselves. Or what about a Corleone inside job? Michael himself giving the order. But for what? Maybe the disconnect between him and New York led to Clemenza attempting to consolidate power for himself and turn his back on Michael, so he was taken out. But again, this theory is far-fetched and there is nothing in the film to suggest this. In fact, it seems Clemenza was running things a lot better than Pentangeli was, so it would be a poor move on Michael's part. Ultimately, Willy Chichi's line serves the purpose to inform us, the viewer, of the disconnect between the New York street guys and the champagne-drinking lot of Michael Corleone, and it sets up the mistrust surrounding Pentangeli, which climaxes with his eventual betrayal. Interestingly, the actual death of Peter Clemenza is depicted in a sequel novel to The Godfather called The Godfather Returns, written by Mark Weingardner and published in 2004. It's a cool little passage and it goes as follows. Peter Clemenza was holding court at a diner just outside the garment district, a place with a back dining room where no one who was not with Clemenza was ever seated. The man who owned the place was old enough to be Pete's father, and Pete was 70. They'd been best friends longer than either man could remember. This particular morning, the boss was home sick and Pete was in the kitchen, an apron tied over his silk suit, cooking peppers and eggs, redoing the chopped onion and showing the ropes to the punks who worked for his friend, keeping them in line. Two of Clemenza's men sat at a metal table crammed in the corner, listening to Clemenza do what he'd done for the better part of his walking life, which was tell a story. It had been what had sealed his bond with Vito Corleone. Pete was a born storyteller, Vito a born listener. This one happened five years ago, right after Pete got out of prison for a short stretch he'd had to do for extortion. The case was overturned on appeal. Pete had gone to see Tessio's new TV. Compared to the TV sets in the joint, Pete said, this one's got a picture so pretty it made your dick hard. It's Friday night, and Tessio's got a few of us over to watch the fights, hoist a couple, place a friendly wager or two. Tessio had inside dope on every fight in creation, but he's extending his hospitality, so losing money to him. It's like slipping the house a little something for a good seat. Only guy there I don't know is this one kid, new guy, wound tight as a squirrel. For somebody who's not well known, he's asking a lot of questions. And at a certain point, I say something about it. Kid goes white, but Sally says, let him ask. How else does a guy learn? A little later, I'm in the hall coming out of the can when Richie Two Guns asked what the squirrel story was. I didn't know shit, I said, which maybe ought to be on my tombstone. The first fight starts and Sally tells Richie to turn the sound off, that he can't stand the announcer. Then Sally tells the squirrel to announce the fight. Kid laughs, but Sally pulls out a gun and waves it at him like, get on with it. Kid looks like he might piss himself. Welcome to Madison Square Garden, he says, and I shit you not, his voice comes out of the TV. Who's in the dark trunks, Sally says. The squirrel says, in the dark trunks we have Bill Jack, which again comes through the TV. Sally smiles and says he doesn't like this announcer either. Richie rips the squirrel's shirt off, and damned if this hairy bastard ain't wearing a wire. First one I ever saw with a transmitter. Primitive government piece of shit played right through Sally's new TV. Sally goes over leans into the microphone part and says, Fata la legge, trovato l'ingano. For every law, there's a loophole, I guess you'd say.
Anyway, this cop or whatever he was must have known Italian and figured that despite the rule against killing cops, Sally was going to get the job done anyway. So then the squirrel really does piss himself. It shorts out the fucking transmitter. Squirrel starts jerking and screaming, his nuts on fire, his nuts. Everyone in that cramped kitchen laughed. Clemenza keeled over onto the grill. They must have thought he was going for a bigger laugh yet. For a moment, as the big man's great big heart blew like a bold truck tyre, he got one. Then the flesh of his fat face seared and crackled and his suit coat burst into flame. His men leapt up and pulled him from the grill. They smothered the fire in no time. All the last original employees of Genko Puro Olive Oil, its president, Vito Corleone, its manager, Genko Abandano, and its two salesmen, Sal Tessio and Peter Clemenza, were all dead. Later in the book, the funeral of Clemenza, Vito Corleone's oldest friend, takes place, but the only member of Vito's family who attends is Fredo, out of symbolic value. Nick Gerecci, a Corleone man who is something of the main character in the book, doesn't know why Tom Hagen doesn't attend the funeral, but is aware Vito's wife Carmela has had a flare-up of blood clots. Michael had business, Kay was supposedly leaving him, Connie was off on some beat somewhere in Monaco, and all of the members of the organisation, even Rocco Lampone, were out in Nevada. It's thought that Michael doesn't attend because of his obsession with becoming legitimate, and not wanting to be photographed at a gangster's funeral. At the funeral, Fredo remarks to Gerechi that he's heard that Clemenza's death was no heart attack, but Gerechi dismisses the rumour, saying the autopsy said heart attack, and people today watch too much TV. The book then says, The prevailing rumour was that the men who said they pulled Clemenza from the grill had actually pushed him onto it, that they were trying to burn him up, and along with it, the diner too, but lucked out. He had a heart attack, which streamlined things. There were men both inside and outside his own crew who were suspected of the killing, if there had been a killing, which was highly debatable. That didn't stop other rumours from flying. Many seemed to think Clemenza had been killed by Hyman Roth, the Jewish gang leader, if only because Roth was in the middle of negotiations with Michael Corleone for control of Cuba. Louis Russo's Chicago outfit couldn't be ruled out either. If it had been murder... Gerechi would have bet on the Rosato brothers, a rogue element in Clemenza's regime with ties to Don Rico Tatalia. All that said, both Occam's razor and Clemenza's diet pointed to an unadorned heart attack. An autopsy showed that his heart was twice the size of a normal man's. So the way this book plays it is to basically toe the line from The Godfather Part 2, that Clemenza died of a heart attack, but that there was also suspicions of foul play. It does its job, I guess, but doesn't add anything new to the table that we haven't already discussed in the video. So, how do you think Clemenza died? Do you think it was a simple heart attack, or do you have any suspects in mind? Be sure to check out my video on why Clemenza wasn't in The Godfather Part 2, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.